grab some paper towels or napkins because I'm about to spill all of the tea on Northeastern. Hi guys, Jamie here. I'm a student at Northeastern University studying computer science and design, and I am going into my fourth year. Full disclosure, this isn't sponsored or anything, but I do really love Northeastern, and I think that it's been a great fit for me for the past few years. That being said, there are definitely things that I don't love or things that I wish I had known before committing, so I'm going to talk about those now. So I gathered a lot of questions that entering freshmen had from Reddit and college discussion boards, so if you're looking for the answer to a specific question, I've put them all in the description below. Just click on the timestamp for the question you want to know. But other than that, let's get into it. So since there's a lot to talk about, I broke all the questions into three different categories. Community is going to be about campus life and the social scene. Education will be about classes, professors, advisors, and co-op is just co-op. <laughs> So let's start out with community. So one thing that I found during my time at Northeastern that I think has a big impact on the community is that most students are very independent. Students that come here have to mature very quickly because by their second year they're already searching for a co-op. So since the students here are so independent and because we're on a city campus, I find that there isn't really a cohesive school spirit if you will. I think that the closest thing we have to school spirit or an overarching campus community is on Facebook. So I know that might sound kind of weird because Facebook is kind of outdated, but honestly, Northeastern students use it so much. So almost all of the clubs and offices on campus have a Facebook page or a Facebook group, and it's how you find out about stuff going on around campus. And beyond acting as just a method of communication, there's also a few communities on there. So I'll give a rundown of the major ones. First of all, there's the NU Meme Collective, and this is a place for university-specific memes. So usually it's memes about places around campus, or the school president, Ayun, stuff like that. There's also NU Polls, which is literally just a place for people to make up whatever polls they want, and people like it because it's random and it's fun to vote. We also have NU Crushes, which is a place for people to anonymously post their crushes or just like compliments for other people. So that can get a little spicy, but it's fun because people always tag their friends in it. And the final fairly large group is NU Confessions. So this is also an anonymous page where people can just anonymously submit whatever confessions they might have. So usually it's a place for people to like rant and people will comment on it. So I will link all of those down below. They're private groups, so you have to request to join. I think that the reason they're so popular is that the entire student body is never in Boston because people are away on co-op or they're away studying abroad. So it's a nice way to connect the entire community or most of it, I guess. <laughs> So talking about people not being in Boston, Northeastern has a huge international student population. I think I read online that we have the third largest international student population in the US behind, I think, NYU and USC. So basically there's just a lot of people here from all over the world and I really liked it, but I will say that international students do have a stereotype. People like to make fun of their friends and I guess it's not a huge deal, but it is kind of a part of the culture. So just be prepared for that, I guess. Beyond international students, I swear it feels like half of the school is either from New Jersey or California. Not really sure why it ended up like that, but people like to tease the kids from New Jersey a lot, so people should also be prepared for that. All right, so transitioning from that, let's talk about the clubs on campus. So there are a ton of clubs on campus. I think that there's close to 700 at this point. They're pretty easy to get involved in, and I think that they're also easy to get involved in at any time. So it's not weird to join a new club like your third year, just because there's people always coming and going. So there are the professional clubs, which are usually more major based. So for example, I'm in NU Women in tech, which is a club for women in computer science, and usually we have career discussions and panels and stuff like that. There's also art clubs, like the dance club that I'm in, and those are pretty low commitment. There are cultural clubs, and the biggest one on campus is Barcada, which is the Filipino culture club. Also, there is traditional Greek life on campus, so fraternities and sororities. The Greek scene isn't that big on campus. Personally, I did end up joining a sorority my sophomore year, and I never thought that I would join a sorority in my life. I think that joining a sorority was one of the best decisions that I made because it has the strongest and most close-knit community out of all the clubs I'm in. All of that being said, it might sound really intimidating to join Greek life, and I get that. So, on the subject of frats, let's talk about parties. So, Northeastern doesn't really have frat houses. A perk of being in Boston is that people go to parties at Harvard, MIT, and BU. You don't need to be in Greek life if you want to go to parties. A lot of clubs or sports teams also 
throw parties, so it's not a requirement. And I would say that parties usually happen between Thursday and Saturday. There's not really a big weeknight party culture, um, and I think part of that is because of co-op and people have to be up for work the next morning. I also wanted to talk about the sports culture on campus. So we don't have a football team, and our biggest sport is hockey. Every year there's a hockey tournament in Boston called the Bean Pot, and Northeastern has won it for the past few years, so that's pretty much the big game that people look forward to, but other than that, I don't think a ton of people are super into sports. There's definitely still a community for it if that's what you want to do, but it's not a very physical thing on campus. So I think that a good amount of the games are away, and we also don't tailgate because there's no open space to do it, and parking on campus is so expensive that it's insane, so most people don't have cars. So moving on to another kind of aspect of community is housing. So freshmen and I believe sophomores are required to live on campus. Let me say this first to get it out of the way. Freshman year, your housing is determined by your LLC or living learning community and your LLC does not matter. So don't stress too much about it. So the LLC you're in pretty much just determines what type of events are going on in your building. The best events are the ones that give out free food and I think that's pretty universal among all the LLCs. So there's not really an issue there. There are a few major specific LLCs, so I think that there's a comp side one and an engineering one and a business one. And those are nice because you'll probably have a roommate that's in a similar field of study as you. And even in the major specific LLCs, there's always kids that aren't in that major anyway. And the other LLCs, like the music one or the leadership one, usually have a pretty diverse mix of majors. So in the past, there has been issues with housing shortages because Northeastern has been having bigger and bigger freshman classes. Because of this, Northeastern rented out the Midtown Hotel, which is all the way down Huntington Avenue by the Peru, and kids stayed there on the second floor as a dorm, which really sucks because it's not a dorm, there were still guests there, it's kind of far, and they also made all those students stay in a meal plan because they didn't have a kitchen. To help this, a new building did open up called Lightview on the Columbus Avenue side of campus. It's not on campus housing, but the building is pretty much on campus. It's apartment style and I've heard that it's really nice, but the leases can be a pain. Beyond that, I would say that a lot of students choose to move off campus after their second year. So they usually go to Mission Hill, which is a neighborhood nearby, which is within 15 minutes walking distance, or they go to Symphony, Gainsboro, or St. Stephen Street. All right, so that was a lot about community, so let's talk about education. So classes, professors, studying abroad, all that jazz. Let me start out by saying that there are so many majors at Northeastern. Because of the combined majors, there are so many different combinations that I feel like I'm hearing a new one every week. Personally, I'm doing a combined major. I'm doing computer science and design, which is a fairly common one. And another common one is computer science and business. I really love it because it's essentially double majoring without having to do the full course load of each major, but it is still a pretty heavy course load. Because of that, a lot of people find it hard to study abroad because there's so many courses to complete, and a lot of people come in with credit from high school that takes up their elective credits. However, it is still possible to study abroad if you really want to. I would say a lot of people do a dialogue, which is a summer term, and that's two classes. Those are my favorite. I did two of them. Would have been three if it weren't for quarantine. And you can also co-op abroad or do a traditional semester abroad. A traditional study abroad takes a lot more planning because you have to pick your courses and figure out what's going to transfer, but it is still possible and I did that as well. I do think that a lot of students at Northeastern do study abroad at least once. Uh, part of that is also due to NUN. So NUN is a program for first semester freshmen to study abroad before starting at the Boston campus in January. So NUN in general is kind of regarded as a party semester. <laughs> like pretty much everyone I've met didn't do much work and they just enjoyed being of age. And also the people in NUN get pretty close with the other people at their site. Because of this, when NUN kids come back in the spring, they're kind of a cult. It doesn't take long for them to assimilate back into campus once the spring semester starts, and no one necessarily knows that you were in NUN because people are always coming and going anyway. So after that first semester, it really makes no difference if you did NUN or not. In comparison, Boston classes are harder and NUN kids kind of struggle to adjust with that in the spring because realistically it's kind of like their first semester of real classes. So in general, the classes at Northeastern aren't too difficult in my opinion. There are some that are known to be harder, like the fundamental computer science courses or organic chemistry, stuff like that. But in general, I would say they're pretty manageable. There isn't a ton of grade inflation, but there still are professors that curve. Another thing is that there are both great and bad professors at the school as there is at any school. 
The classrooms at the school aren't always super nice as well. They always show you ISEC on the school tours, which is our new science building and it's really fancy and futuristic. But in reality, there's barely any classes held there. There are lecture halls in the West Village that are fairly nice, and there's also classrooms in buildings like Hastings and the Science Quad, so like Robinson Hall. And some of those older ones kind of suck. Some other campus stuff, there are two gyms on campus and a third only for varsity athletes. They're pretty crowded at peak hours. The Student Health Center is on Forsyth Street and it's horrible. It's something that students have petitioned a lot to improve, but their services, especially their mental health services, are just lacking because there's not enough staff for the number of students we have. There's also the Student Center, Curry, which has a lot of meeting rooms and a food court on the bottom floor. There are always random people there because it's open and you don't have to swipe in, and it's also really common for people to do work there. There's also After Hours, which is a coffee house type place on the bottom floor. It's really just a Starbucks and a stage in the corner, but they put on a good amount of live events there, usually live music. Another common place to study is Snell Library, which is the worst. You have to swipe to get in so there's no random people there, but we only have one library on campus for a population of almost 20,000 students, so it's pretty crowded and it's hard to find a seat. You can book some small study rooms online, which is nice, but don't book one just for yourself because everyone will glare at you through the glass windows. Another kind of aspect of education at Northeastern is the different offices on campus. So the Office of Financial Aid, the Academic Advising Offices. I'm going to be honest, these offices are some of the worst things at Northeastern in my opinion. There's a really high turnover rate for staff there, so at this point I think I've had like five financial aid advisors, four academic advisors. They just come and go all the time, so you do have to be pretty proactive and independent in your own plan of study. Another thing that is uniquely Northeastern is that you get a co-op advisor to help you throughout your co-op search. So that moves us into our third topic, which is co-op. So co-op is the bread and butter of Northeastern. It's a big draw for coming here, it's what they always talk about, and it's a main reason why people choose to come here other than it being in a city. So your co-op process starts in your second year, and people usually do their first co-op in either the spring of their second year or the fall of their third year. Students usually do two or three co-ops depending on if they're on a four or five year plan, but just be aware if you want to do a four year plan and two co-ops, you're going to need to take classes during the summer. So that's what happened to me last year. I was on co-op from January to June, and then I took classes from July to December. So if you do it like that, then there's no summer break. Because of co-op usually being six months, there's always people on campus because they're there for one of the summer terms, depending on what cycle they're on. The semester before you go on co-op, you have to take a one credit professional development class, and they teach you about resumes, interviewing, stuff like that. Northeastern also has a database of co-ops to apply for with established employers, so some companies hire a lot of co-ops like Wayfair and TJ Maxx. There are co-ops outside of Boston, so people will set up carpools to commute to that, and there's also a good amount of co-ops in Cambridge and the downtown area. Those are easy to get to because both the Green Line and the Orange Line run through campus, but just know that it's really hard to get onto the train during commuting hours, and you have to be really aggressive if you want to get on. If you need to commute on the T, they sell a discounted semesterly pass. You have to order it the semester before, so as soon as you accept an offer, you would have to go online to order it but it does save you some money. I've also heard of people managing to get their co-op to pay for their Charlie card, so if you can finesse that, it's also an option. So in addition to co-ops in Boston, there are also co-ops around the world. A good amount of people choose to do that. Really common places to go are New York City and California, and people do go abroad, although it's not as well paying as domestic co-ops. Speaking of money, you do get to make money while you're on co-op. Co-op is really great, and people usually prefer it over classes because you're getting paid, and you also have free time after work and on the weekends, and you don't have to worry about assignments or exams or any of that. So the biggest thing that I think prospective students should know is that it's not a very typical college experience, in my opinion. That's not to say it's impossible, but because of the whole co-op system and just the atmosphere of the student body, there are differences from if you were to go to, say, a state school. For me, those differences are what I really like about Northeastern. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to drop them down below and I will get back to you. And that's all I have for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!